In this Debaco University video, we're going to go over the harvest process of cannabis. Going to give you some options such as whole plant or selective, as well as an indoor and an outdoor environment example, so you can try to apply this process and be thinking about your chosen path when you go to considering harvesting cannabis plants. All right, let's get into the harvest process of cannabis and remember those real world examples we provided at the end here. So first off, even before you get into harvest, while many growers focus on the harvest process, remember that before you begin the process of harvesting, you should have the next step all set to go. And that next step, a very important drying and curing process. Make sure you have that set up before you start taking any plants down. There's no sense harvesting if you're not ready to move the material through the final phases of the process simply because you have a greater chance of losing that uh, crop and material there. So how do you determine well, when to harvest? When's the best time to harvest? Well, this comes from an inspection of the buds themselves. A combination of stigma and trichome development is used to pinpoint the peak harvest times. If you wanna see some uh, representative images of both the stigma, the trichome, looking at the bud size and development, there are other videos on this channel that can help you with that. In short though, when the stigmas are a tan brown coloration and the trichomes are mostly cloudy with a few starting to turn amber color, this is typically a sign that the harvest time is basically quote unquote now. Now uh, when you're kind of seeing that age of development, that's kind of that peak harvest time and you want to have everything set up for the drying and curing phase ahead of that. So when you get to this, you can go through with the harvest process. So preparing the plants, preparing the growers as well. Uh, when you determine that the plants are close to harvest time, be sure to allow some time to flush them when you're only giving them water and not nutrients to remove any excess buildups of nutrients or salts in the root zone. Also, uh, by just giving them water, you're reducing your input cost without impacting your yield. For more information on that, again, more other videos, keep in mind that this is applied to both indoor and outdoor operations as well as hydroponics. Uh, hydroponics, you're going to have the short shortest duration of flush time and for soil you're with a higher clay base you're going to have the longest duration of time between uh, for flushing. So we need to move, uh, we need to have more than just the plants. Uh, be sure you have the following on hand to make the harvest processing as efficient as possible. You need to have pruners, a transport surface, as well as time and labor to go through the actual process of taking down the plants, harvesting them. Now there will be other videos on wet trims and dry trims that you can look at in this channel um, as far as doing the final detail trim as we see here, but just taking the plants down can be quite labor intensive. So those pruners that I had mentioned, when we're talking pruners, or when I'm mentioning pruners, I'm talking something more like the image here. They're used for cutting back branches and are different from scissors that are used more for detail work. So I consider these to be scissors, these are more your pruners. They're typically the rough and tough plant takedown tools. Uh, they're especially useful for removing the central stem on that ground level. Uh, on smaller plants and larger plants, you're kind of cutting that plant down that you're going to use pruners for. Your scissors I consider to be more your uh, detailed trimmers, for example. Now that transport surface that I had mentioned, since you're likely to have the growing location separate from the drying location, a method of moving the plants needs to be implemented. Depending on the size of the harvest and distance, this can involve a trailer or even a cart. In either situation, the goal is to have a clean surface uh, and to not overly pack the plants during transport to avoid physically damaging the plants during this process. Some go with like cattle trailers and actually hang plants right in there. Others will go with selective bins. Uh, so all of these are different options. Uh, but the key part with, or consistency with all these is clean. We have to wash them out between transport and not really kind of like packing them in there. You're kind of kind of loosely putting them here or even hanging them are both good options. And as I mentioned, the time and labor. Uh, so having an idea of the scale of your operation, which we'll see in some uh, videos here uh, showing indoor and outdoor, scale of the operation is important. Uh, and the plants you determine to be ready for harvest, make sure you have enough time and helping hands to get the job done. Often this is a labor intensive process, so be sure to pace your progress and keep an eye on everyone uh, for both typically to make sure that plants are being harvested in the way you want, but also just a good practice to keep an eye on everyone that's working for you and uh, make sure no one gets lost or dehydrated or heat stroke or anything like that. So again, keep that in mind as well. 
Now we've got two ways we can harvest uh, uh, cannabis in general. We have the whole plant harvest, and then we also have selective plant harvest. Well, whole plant harvest, the advantage is it allows for clearing of an entire plant material all at the same time, which is great. Makes for easy planning and clearing of the area. Great uh, if the planned end product is uh, concentrates, because you're taking all the buds, all the, all the um, plants at the same time. The disadvantage is it's the most labor intensive of the harvesting options and all the plant material has to be handled at the same time and it's going to be very difficult to kind of hang and dry entire plants, uh, but as we can see in this image it is possible. The other option, if it doesn't sound like it fits your operation, we have also going on to selective plant harvest. So this allows growers to select only the buds at their prime. Uh, can provide the opportunity for other buds to continue to develop and ideally get more yield in the same area. However, the disadvantage it does require multiple times to go through the plants and harvest, and time can, uh, can, and care needed to be taken to carefully remove only those buds that are at the peak of harvest. So you've, now you've learned about these methods, you have an idea about the kind of harvest process. Now I'm going to go into both an outdoor and an indoor operation so you can get an idea of applying what method you might choose to these actual real world situations. So I hope you enjoy. Now keep in mind this is field grown, so you are going to have some natural variability, uh, especially growing this many plants with, some vari with the variable of the weather and reaction to maybe the transplant of going into containers. But overall, uh, we can see that there's definitely this uh, great kind of transition from the vegetative stage right to the flower stage and now getting to late flower stage, which will soon progress to the harvest stage. And that will lead to the drying and curing stage as well. So this is a nice kind of view here of just kind of the end of the season harvest there. And we'll look at some of these buds a little bit closer up here so you can get that appreciation for exactly what all these plants have gone through and are producing. So now here we are out in the field looking at the development of the buds and assessing how far along they are. And we can see looking at some of the leaves near the buds, we're seeing that coloration, that amber kind of change to the leaves. We're also going to be getting into looking at the actual bud themselves. Now we're seeing full kind of development here. We're noticing we're going to get a little closer view here of the actual stigmas to see how they're actually looking and they're developing quite long. We're seeing a lot of that brown coloration indicating they're kind of nearing that end of development. Now we don't want to always compare to what's around us because it can depend on the planting time of the actual crop and a little bit on the weather but looking behind me we see the leaves uh, turning so this is a sign that uh, we're having that reduction in light that change in photo period and that's signaling these plants to go through and develop. Now here, as we're taking a real specific look at this bud in particular, you definitely see some of the development that is occurring and the degree of development that's occurring. Now, those leaves definitely getting some of that little purple coloration to them, indicating we are getting to the colder times of the year, indicating hopefully also those anthocyanins might be as just a stress response. And some, some varieties will produce more of that purple. However, what we're really looking at is kind of the stigma and hopefully development of trichomes with the loop. And we're noticing here that we're getting that kind of brown coloration to the very end. That's a sign that we're getting near that end of development, getting that this bud's going to be ready to harvest pretty soon. Now here's another bud on the same plant, also inspecting this one. Not the apical marisum, this is one of the side branches. Uh, but we can see continued and consistent development, which is great to see. Realizing that this may not get to the full development that we saw the first one, uh, but definitely seeing very consistent um, co colorations, very consistent stigma development. So again, it may not reach the full size as the apical meristem, but definitely progressing along the same progression that we saw the apical meristem, indicating this plant might be harvested all around the same time, which makes it great from a grower standpoint. We don't have to go through and harvest all the individual buds at separate timetables. So this is that little zoom out here, looking at the whole plant and the many located behind this one. So overall here you can see in total in this grow space, it's about 6,000 plants. So it's harvest time, which is a busy time. And sometimes you can be a victim of your own success. But just keep going through, keep harvesting, and hopefully you'll be rewarded in the end. 
It's a very successful crop. And there's plenty of work to do here that we can see. So as we're going through the greenhouse here, we can see all of the plants. See kind of this greenhouse environment, have some fans on for air circulation, try to prune those lower leaves out. Now we are getting close to the harvest time. So we are seeing the buds developing and here we see the upper portions being where the light is exposed. And of course, that's where most of the prime or apical buds are positioned. See some lights there. Those lights are there for early stage growth, and if it's cloudy out, offers a little supplemental light. But the main light source for these plants is, of course, the sun, which makes this greenhouse environment very energy efficient. Now, there is some heat and cooling, of course, and some lights, as you can see, but for the most part, the sun is the energy. Now, utilizing that sun, we see the screen of green method here, where all those buds have kind of been pruned and kind of directed to go through that uh, mesh material. And that mesh material allows that them to support themselves allows it a great way to be able to support all those plant materials to try to maintain these those apical buds so they to get the maximum amount of light and that's why we saw earlier the lower portions being pruned out with the leaves now there are about 6,000 plants here so quite a lot to take care of getting ready to harvest so there is a lot of work to come uh, with the harvest process of all of these plants